Everybody knows Coach Don Rodrigue. He is one of the heads of the Louisiana line camp, and that is going to happen again this year. We're so happy to have him here with us. After the year of taking off for COVID, Coach, we're back at it. Tell everybody what's going on with the camp. Yes, it's uh, June 19th through the 22nd. Registration's on a Saturday morning. We start about 9. Uh, we close registration uh, right after 1 because we have – uh, a total meeting of, a meeting of all the, the campers and all our coaches in one room. And we go through the protocol of telling uh, the, the rules of the camp and so on. And, you know, we have the trainers there and they, they do their spiel and we get the head coach from Nichols, Coach Rebo speaks. And we set the tone. Then we break up our offense and defense. And and we, we, we have to put everyone in groups. So it, it takes us takes us about an hour of, of organization to get all the kids in, in different groups and, uh, you know, and uh, look at videos. And we, we go to lunch about right after four, and we're on the field at six. So, and the parents that come, they're welcome to come in the meeting. And they can go into any meeting they want. And if those of you familiar with the camp, the, it's right, uh, right in front of the campus. It's right next door to St. Thomas Aquinas, the, 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 the church on campus. And the beauty part about the camp, people keep on asking us, are y'all going to move to the Manning Fields? I said, no. If they can move all them oak trees from the front to the back, yes, we will move. But we're not, we, I mean, it's in, in the heat of the summer, those oak trees are a savior for, for the coaches as well as the campers. Obviously, the numbers were growing every year with the COVID situation. What does it look like for this year's camp? Three, eight, in uh, 18, 2018, we had 380 campers. In 2019, we had 525 campers. <laughs> but, and right now, at the end of April, we are about 35, 40 campers ahead of the pace from 19. So, and we, we never know what's, what's coming down with. And we always have anywhere from 50 to 75 kids who don't register, they don't send anything by mail, they don't get online, and they show up and they want to be part of camp and we take them. You know? So there is no, y'all don't have a ceiling on this or, you know, I well, guess- we've it, never had to have one. So, and it all is dictated by the number of dorm rooms that Nichols has. And, you know, we, we've got the different dorms, they shut down for maintenance in the summer, so sometime we can use this dorm at this summer at certain times. So uh, right now, uh, 600 campers would be about our, our about our max. But we, and again, you just don't know. We have, you know, I mean, just with three campers, three three schools, Calic High in 19 had 60 campers, Jesuit had 50, Vanderbilt had about 25. Now, you know, uh, you know, and all three of those schools have brand new head coaches. So, and of course, one of them doesn't even have a head coach yet, but the others do, you know. So we're uh, we, we're we're hoping that that they all they they follow along what's been done at those schools in in, in the past. So uh, I, I get call, phone calls all the time. I probably have two of them waiting for me to call them back now, and it says uh, I want to register my kids. What can I do? And I go through the whole spill, and then Randy Bro and I take those calls all day long about you know, uh, uh, campers that want to register, what I have to do, where it's at. I had one from uh, Austin, Texas, uh, just two days ago. He said, he, he said my son's about 6'4", 250. He's a defensive lineman, goes to a small school, and we hear that this is the best camp in the nation. I said, you're correct. So, <laughs> and he told me, it says, we're 11 hours away and we're coming. So, and Alito High School has about five or six Alito High School, right, out, right, right outside of uh, San Antonio, I think it's San Antonio. No, it's around around Dallas. They've won six out of the last, last seven, six A state championship, and they're sending kids. So that's how far we 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 reach, and so on. Coach, this is the best line camp in all of the United States. How did this all get started? Well, it started off in '87, Phil Greco's first summer. And it was the brainchild of Jesse Daigle, Pete Jenkins, and Kenny Farrell. All of them were coaching at LSU. Jesse Daigle had a son that was a pretty proficient high school quarterback. And he had no place to send linemen. 
So between Pete was the defensive line coach, Pharaoh was the tight ends and offensive line coach, and Jesse. So they came to Nichols, and we, you know, and I was on the staff, and we had under 100 campers, and then by year three we were 275, 300. But it was, and it was all word of mouth. That was no social media to spread the word. And Jesse was smart, or Jesse and Pete and Kenny were smart, and they got they got a guy from Monroe to coach. They got a guy from the Lafayette area and they got a guy from the Baton Rouge area. So they picked their spots. And then after everybody saw what the, the worth of the camp was, and it was a work camp, it was not a recruiting camp. There's uh, there's no taking pictures with the head coaches. There's no, we don't care if you six four or five nine. Just so you you know follow the rules. And it, the mission of the of the camp is to get a high school player to come on campus, go through drills, go back to his team and make his team better. That's the mission statement. Just to, to make, whether you win the playoffs or go, we want you to win. But the mission is to get each individual player to go back home and be a better football player. Again, we are talking with Coach Don Rodriguez, who was one of the leaders of the Louisiana line camp. Coach in the past, y'all have had great defensive linemen attend this as coaches called Dunbar, formerly of LSU, now on the professional ranks. Kevin Mawai, a terrific, terrific player at LSU, obviously a Hall of Famer, and he was coaching at Arizona State. Then you have Ryan Nielsen of the Saints, who was going to be at LSU, but of course of the Saints. Are we going to see those kind of guys at the camp again this year? We won't see the Detroit Lions because Bo Davis left the Detroit Lions, and he's with the he's with the he's at Texas. So, and Dunbar should be here with Pittsburgh. We had three guys from the from the Chiefs. Of course, we're probably only going to have two of them. And uh, 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 Nielsen, who almost went to LSU as the, as the defensive line coach, but he's still with the Saints. So uh, we, we're thinking in, in uh, 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 Henry Thomas, who comes every year, and that's all Pete Jenkins guys, you know. And, of course, Kevin, Kevin when I uh, saw that he was leaving Arizona State, I said, all right. So I texted him, got in touch with him. I said, uh, congratulations, you're going line coach with, with the coach and so on. He says, line camp, here I come. So we're expecting that he's going to come. He loves it. He, he loves it. To register, coach, it's quite easy. Can't you just go online and get that done? Yes. When you register online, you have to, you have to put up the whole camp fee, which is 425 And we have a, a company that does that. And, of course, they charge, they give you an upcharge for them doing the service, which is about $25. Or you can get the brochure, fill it out, uh, put a deposit of $100, mail it in, and we take them. And on there, which was something pretty unique, you can prefer a roommate. You know, if you come in with like, like Jesuit and so on, they put down and we put them all, we put them all together. We've got uh, uh, North DeSoto is coming for the second year. They're going to have in the 20s. Lauraville, which is going to be a new school. They're going to have nine to ten. Uh, Lutcher comes in. with. They started off with eight to ten. They're in the twenties now. And the coach makes fundraisers, and they and they, they do pools, and they do uh, uh, chicken dinners and spaghettis, and he makes the kids work for it, and then they, they split it up. And, of course, if they have to come up with a few bucks, that's that's fine. Jennings came in with, with 25 in the past, uh, so St. Paul's is supposed to have eight or 10. When, when you come as a team and you're working in groups and there's gonna be another school, it might be somebody from your district, from your area and so on. When, those, when you start, when you're a competitor and you see the guy striking the bag and moving his feet and doing the drills, you're not, you're not gonna go in there half-hearted. So it teaches competitiveness but the, we can work all of our drills in about a 10 by 10 square. There's no footballs flying around. It's bags and shields and sleds. And it's all about where are your feet? Where are your hands? Where are your eyes exploding with your hips? And you get the whole bunch working together. And a lot of schools, as soon as practice is over, they don't let them leave. They bring them in and there's some little pep talk in there. And what I found with those schools is that the older guys, they grab the younger guys and bring them along because somebody did it to them and they're pep talking them the whole time. 
Central Lafourche has a, is going to have 20 kids. We've never had that many. So Aaron Myers is pushing the heck up. When does registration close? Do y'all have a certain date that you shut everything down? We're going to close it, the online and the mail-in about four days from, uh, you know, from the, from the camp. So people don't register and we don't get all the information. But if you want to walk in with your registration fee, the only thing about that, when, when we do that, it's, it's hard to get you with a roommate that you want. If you do it online, and uh, I mean, it, like Jesuit, if they, if they come up with 50 kids, we got, we got to put 25 rooms on the side for them. You know, and we put them all on the same floor. Of course, we put their coaches with them. And, and with the COVID restrictions, Nichols told me the other day, so I got to get this out. They just told me this. When the kids leave the dorm, they got to have a mask when they go, walk into the cafeteria. When they leave the cafeteria, they got to put it back on. When they walk into practice, uh, you know, when they get to practice, take it off when you're walking back. So that's some of the rules that, that's going to be all new to us. Of course, the kids have been doing it all school year. The ones we've been doing, you know, uh, following, following the rules. So that's going to be one of, one, one of the different things. And we're going to have a meeting with the, uh, to finalize some things next week with the Nichols staff, with the, with the uh, medical people and so on. So this is the same great camp that we've always been accustomed to, right? See if you can, if they can see this. <laughs> we can. I survived. You know what? I still see those shirts everywhere, man. And the, the only thing, the colors change, but the saying on it has not. I mean, well, because my son went through it for four or five years. He went and. Uh, we don't take, we, th we take ninth graders on up. So you got a chance to go to four years. Some parents called me up the other day. I have an eighth grader. I said, and this is what I tell them. We have an eighth grader somewhere that are physically able to go through this camp. All right. We have some that are not mentally able to go through it because it's three day practices. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the, on the Sunday morning. We're going to get them up at seven. They go to breakfast on the field at nine, off at 11, shower, eat, on the field at 1.30, off at 3.30, shower, eat, back on the field for six, off at eight, shower, you in a, you in a, a meeting from, from nine to 10. So, I mean, they have very little time, you know, they get some, they get some rest time, but, uh, you know, that's that, and that's the grind of the camp, they get eight practices. Now, we have some kids that they just do offense. We have some kids that just do defense. Then we have some that want to do both because they play both ways. So they get four practices on offense. They get four practices on defense. And I, when they call and tell me, what should I do? I says, you got to get with your, with your high school or position coaching. I, I don't know exactly what your specifics are, but we, we give you the opportunity to, to, to do four and four. Four days of line camp. Again, folks, it's June 19th through June 22nd. Always a great camp. The best line camp in all of the United States of America. Again, Coach, thanks for giving up some time. Hope everything goes well. And we'll keep up to date on everything as the camp gets closer. Yes, sir. Thank you.